Hi, I'm Nicholas Woolwork, CEO of Redbrick and PropertyForum.com. We're excited today to talk to you about um, construction techniques and in particular, the importance of a structural engineer on site. We're on my mentorship client site here in Fleet in Hampshire, and I'm joined by Tom Gillett, um, our project manager, to talk about the importance of the structural design um, and the structural elements within the building. So welcome, Tom. Morning. Thanks nice for joining again. us again. Um, so I think one of the first things um, you know, we want to talk about, some examples on, on this site in particular, um, where structural input was required from the, from the relevant consultants? Um, on most developments, you're going to have a number of key consultants, um, architects, mechanical, electrical engineers, and structural engineers would tend to be the, the triumvirate, the three main ones that you would have on mo in most cases. This is, of course, is an existing site. So we were dealing with uh, a skeleton, steel structural skeleton, which was already in place. And mindful of the redevelopment nature of the site, there was obviously some alterations that we have to do uh, to make sure that both the existing structure can accommodate what we're doing and also to reflect and quite literally support the changes that we're doing at the same mm, time. Absolutely. Um, in the case of uh, this site, it's a late 1980s structure, uh, obviously fully compliant at the time with the building regulations, which were acceptable then. They've changed slightly since then in terms of steelwork. And don't forget, the structural integrity of a building is something that the approved building inspector will be expecting to see uh, substantive evidence that if there are any changes, that these have not taken place in a proper manner, but they have been verified by a suitably qualified engineer. And in fact, you may find that in terms of some of the planning conditions, you have to provide the local authority also with additional structural information pertaining to it, such as calculations and drawings over and above those that, that you might normally do if it wasn't so, so much the case. So, uh, in and also proving, sorry to interrupt, proving that the, if you don't need any work, proving you don't need any work done, I guess right. is the other flip Quite side, right. isn't it? You so can, you need that input You can regardless. challenge that and a structural engineer may earn his or her fee by being able to prove that you don't need to invest quite as much mm. in terms of costs uh, into substantiating the building if it can be shown that the existing building is perfectly capable. Mm. There is a propensity um, for engineers obviously mindful of getting sued for negligence to over-engineer. Um, to possibly over-engineer <laughs> and it's not unusual for that to be to a factor of almost three we've found in the past. One of my bugbears, as you well it, know. It is. Tom, Tom no, no, obviously, when he sends no, no, me uh, consultants no, reports it, and I'm like why are we spending this on this? Indeed. But, but obviously, uh, we need to do these things safe. These buildings are going to be lasting for somewhere between 25 to 50 years, certainly in terms of use, and they have, they've got to be right. And of course, the steelwork as well has also got to be uh, fireproof in most cases. As we talk, Please. So, show some of the steels. A building like this, uh, we've just put some uh, temporary steelwork in at the moment. This is part of the requirement the structural en engineer had to improve the integrity of the main building. This is work in process, so it's not yet finished. Welds have been put in place, there's some temporary holding bolts in place. In due course, these will be replaced with the proper engineering bolts and obviously it'll all be flame uh, fire protected. Mm. Uh, upstairs, uh, we are putting in some mezzanine structures and again, uh, they've now gone in place in terms of temporary structure and completion of those works uh, is due in the next week or two weeks. Yeah, looking really good upstairs. We'll go and pan to those off, off camera in a moment, but as you can see all the steels in this particular area, these have all gone on to kind of, I guess, hold the whole building together. You've got these two internal uh, courtyard spaces and the structural engineer just felt that this area needed a bit more tying in, I guess. That's exactly, what, that's exactly yeah. what it was. Because we've removed some of the existing walls, because we've removed some of the existing structure, uh, and the introduction of new walls, uh, she required far more integrity. Better safe than sorry. At the end of the day, it's not a huge amount of money to put it in, and obviously we can all sleep better at night knowing, knowing that uh, you know it's it's there. We want to, I guess, it's, it's finding the balance between the best possible safety standards and the viability of the site, or over-engineering it, as you said. So you want to get somewhere, you know, in that safety zone of very comfortably sleeping, sleeping at night, hitting the best safety standards and the best product as a developer to build the best quality product you possibly can, keeping in mind the viability of the project and making sure that the design is such that it matches the, the application ultimately. 
Yeah, uh, structural engineers, as I said, are one of the main sort of primary consultants that you would have on a development of this size. And in fact, uh, it could even be something as simple as an extension to a house where you're still going to need some input dependent upon the size of the lintels, depth of foundation. Structural engineer practices also tend to be the go-to offices for below ground drainage as well. So you would often find the structural engineer's offices also have the drainage engineers because they're integral. In the case of this particular building, we've actually found reinforcement in the ground floor slab, which was not actually detailed on the as-built drawings. And because of that, our expectations as to what we could do and the direction and how we would install the drainage it has to be reevaluated because the reinforcement mm. that's existing has to be reinstated. Yeah. We can't just get in here and break Cut it out. open and just backfill. We've got to uh, do it in a much more methodical manner. Yeah. The builder has Calculated got to be cons way. quite literally and the builder's also got to be consistent in how they reinstate and make mm. sure that the reinforcement was in and the, and the fire breaks are back in and well. that kind of stuff if required. For sure. Um, the uh, the strip foundations that we found here mean that as we're breaking out, the amount of work that the builder's got to do is far more extensive than we originally envisaged. So this is a genuine unforeseen and it's a case in point where despite having done previous trials holes and having looked at previous as-built drawings, when the original estimate was done by the builder for this work, he couldn't have known the greater extent of work he's going to have to do. Sure. So that's a discussion in due course we're going to have to have because that will be a variation in terms of time and cost. It will have a direct knock-on effect. What we're trying to do is rationalise it. We're trying to reduce the amount of drainage runs in order that we can minimise the impact it's had. Definitely. But this is, a, this is an area where we spoke about previously where the contingency will be the source of the funding for that as to what level it will be, we'll just have to know. But within the budget, yeah. we'll address it. We will just have to try and make sure we accom accommodate it within the existing budget contingency and also within the time constraints of the development. Definitely, and it's about keeping that contingency used for things that are really un really, really unforeseen and not thought about. Yeah. Know, something uh, under the ground that's not dug open, it's impossible to know. So that's where the contingency comes in. And a well-planned site, you know, you'll only be using that contingency for those things rather than like, mistakes in uh, calculating specifications. Indeed, or like that. and there's so, only so much you can do in terms of uh, enabling work, trials, holes, scanning, Unfortunately, it's always work in the ground, which is proportionally mm. the most expensive. Uh, and Absolutely. when we've discovered that, that brings with it other additional factors, such as the approved inspector then wants to have a look again how we've reinstated it. The structural engineer has to determine that how it's been reinstated has again been done according to her requirements and then signed off. So there's a number of, there's a number of things that this will trigger, um, mm. which one just needs to be mindful does occur, as we found in this, this particular case. But I believe we've you know, we're managing to mitigate it and, uh, and with good planning we can, we can get over it and progress it without having a major impact on the job. Yeah, get it done quickly. So we've had a look at the steels on the ground floor. Let's go upstairs, have a look at the mezzanines and some of the drainage that we've just been discussing. Follow us. Well, here we are on the second floor. Uh, oh, first floor. Sorry, can't count floors in a, in a building. These are the, the mezzanines which are going in, so really exciting. Um, you can start to see um, you know, the vision come alive where we've got extra rooms up in these meds. I think we've got, so we've got four rooms, haven't we? Yes, we have. Up there, so two, one for each of the four flats that surround the courtyard areas. Um, so as you can see, these are pretty substantial steels. Um, probably over-engineered, right, Tom? <laughs> But no, probably not over there. So maybe slightly over-engineered for one story. But, um, you know, a lot of work obviously goes in, doesn't it, to calculate this, get it right, tying it into the existing building. Um, and actually, these will actually help support the building itself, won't it? I mean, not, not that up here necessarily needed more supporting, but these actually will tie the building in even tighter. The, the, the unusual thing form. about the, this, this particular, particular mezzanine is um, hot works. Um, mm. Normally when you do work in certain buildings, particularly if the building is occupied, commercial building, uh, there's a number of permits that you mm. need to operate in those areas, whether they be security or what have you. In the case of hot works, there is some welding, which is quite unusual these days, you don't see an awful lot of it. In this case, uh, we had a specialist welder come down who spent a couple of days doing the welding work here and downstairs. And as a consequence, uh, at the moment, this structure is temporary. It's perfectly safe, but the hot work, the welding work has all been done. There's temporary uh, engineering bolts have gone in to support it. 
uh, the, um, the specific, specific engineering bolts, bolts which are designed for this are due and they, and so the temporary ones we have in will be replaced in due course. Uh, then this will obviously all be uh, fire protected and then be the, the main structure, the main skeleton from which then we will build the, the mezzanine structure to, of course, it's staircases, floors to go in and the rest of it. Um, but it, it's good to see it here because it gives you an idea of the sort of scale of things and it's much more easy then for particularly the client to get a better understanding and it begins to um, help them appreciate if they're not very good at particularly looking at 2D on drawings to actually see it in real life. I also think as well that if you can, when you're talking to the architect or structural engineers, ask them to produce something ideally in a 3D form, I think it's also mm. very helpful Definitely, to get yeah. an idea as to what something looks like because at this stage it's often not necessarily too, too late, late to change, change things, things, but clearly there's some substantial work being done here. And what you don't want to be doing is go back and retrospectively changing it because it doesn't necessarily satisfy or fulfil the vision that the client thought thought they had in mind. Um, yeah, so this is uh, working in progress. Obviously, we're making good all the floors and in preparation for the uh, the main works to continue. At the moment, we are um, marking out all the tracks for the floor tracks for the internal walls to go in place. First fix services will start to go in shortly, so this will be a hive of activity, particularly next week, uh, because once the... Uh, next month's update is going to be quite a bit different. There'll be quite a bit happening next month, because mm. we've been waiting on some uh, supplies and materials, and as such... Um, some impactive work, you know, when the floor, when the walls start going up and the mezzanine start going up, this is absolutely. the bit I love, when it's kind of everything you've designed on plan and worked with the client on comes to life. I love it and you can explore the building. That's great. Thanks for the input there, Tom. Really appreciate that uh, advice today. So we've taken you through a lot of the structure of the building today, the mezzanines, the extra, you know, the extra steels being added. And you can see it's a vital, important um, part of any development to have that structural engineer's input, um, either to understand whether you need structural engineer's input or not, and then what needs to be done to keep the building safe, secure, ready for the new structure that you're going to put in place. Um, if you've liked this video, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Hope you've enjoyed the video and see you on another one very soon.